Hi guys, I'm Cody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this on the day I upload, happy Halloween. I hope you're having a good one. So, let's talk about all the books I read in October. So I've just counted, and I read 14 books. One of them was an audiobook, but still, that's a hell of a lot. I have Spookathon to thank for that, I think. Um, but let's get into this, and I'll show you the first one I picked up this month. If you watch my TBR, you'll know that I was currently reading, at the time, um, The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August by Claire Knopf. Now, when I filmed that, I did say that I thought it was going to be a four star. I was kind of like halfway through. Unfortunately, I had to put it down to a 3.5. It's still good. 3.5 is still really, really good. It's got such an interesting premise. It's basically about a dude called Harry who, when he dies, he relives his life. So he has like 15 of them that we that we kind of go through. You'd think it'd be confusing, but the way it's written, it's done really, really well. So you don't necessarily get all that lost in the story. However, the reason I put it down to a 3.5 was because it was a little bit anticlimactic for me. I think that might be my fault because this is kind of like a sci-fi. I thought it'd be a bit more action-packed when really it's more character-based. Still really good. Uh, it's probably my fault that I didn't... I didn't really know what I was getting into, but this was good and I would w read more from Claire North. Uh, if you haven't read this and you're interested in the premise, I'd definitely say pick it up because it's very original. I then read The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt and I'm super proud of myself for reading this because it's something I've been putting off. I don't know why. All I knew about it was it was about a painting, The Goldfinch, and it's about a guy and it follows his life through, through to, from childhood to adulthood basically. Looking at the cover, I thought this was historical fiction. It's not. It's really not. It's set in present times and you find out pretty much immediately that he, the lad in this, Theo, he loses his mum in a tragic accident and he basically steals this very, very, very famous and obviously priceless piece of artwork and it follows his journey through through his whole life basically. It's about family, it's about grief, it's really, really well written. There's whole verses of text in here that's just so, so beautiful. It's very immersive. Even though it's a, you know, a big book, it is a page turner. So it really, really wasn't that hard to read. And I really want to read The Secret History now by Donna Tartt because I love this so much. I know this is going to be a movie and I just don't understand how they're going to be put all this goodness and fit it into a 90 minute film. I don't know. I don't, I'm a little bit dubious about that. But if you are a little bit dubious to pick this up, or you kind of be putting it off, I would advise it. It's really, 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 really good. It left me with a little bit of a book hangover. It's just definitely a story that will still stay with me. I can't tell you too much about it because a lot of stuff goes on in this. And I'd much rather you go into it not knowing, really, um, because that's the way I went into it and it was highly, highly enjoyable. I, oh, I, what did I give this? I gave this a five star. Yeah, yeah, one of my new favorite authors, Donna Tartt. I then read a thriller um, called Disclaimer by Renee Knight. I gave it a three. It was all right. It's basically about a woman who finds a story that's in her house, a book, and she reads it only to find out that it is all about her life or a certain time in her life that she really, really is trying to forget and put in the past. So someone knows, basically, and someone's written about it. It's very, very intriguing. We do get to find out who the author is and we hear from their viewpoint as well as her. Um, it was intriguing, it was good, it was, they had, there was a nice twist in the end that I wasn't seeing, didn't see coming, but it wasn't the best thing in the world, so I gave it a three. If you've got this, um, I'd say still read it, but I've read better thrillers. This one was really anticipated for me and I really, really enjoyed it, and that's They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I've not read anything else by him, but this was the one that had me most gripped, um, in the sense of the premise anyway. It's basically about a world where there is a service called Deathcast, which calls you on about midnight, just after midnight on the day you're going to die and tells you how, tells you you're going to die that day, but doesn't tell you how or when. Um, they don't know basically. So it's about two young men, Matteo and Rufus, who both get the call and they decide to meet via an app, which is a last friend app as they would like to spend their last day with someone else who is also spending their last day. And it is a little bit of a romance and it's beautiful. And yes, I cried. Everyone I know who's read this has cried. And yeah, I cried. It was beautiful and it was really, really well done. And I loved how all the stories intertwined with each other. Um, I think that's something that's I really, really like in fiction. I just love it when everything ties together in a nice little bow, I think. So this was really, really good. I would reread it. It wasn't a five, but just because I have read other books that are a little bit more heartbreaking, but I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it a 4.5. Read it, it's really good. I then read Good Me, Bad Me by Ali Land. 
This is a really, really interesting story. Um, I just didn't think it was all that well written. It's basically about a young girl whose mother is a serial killer and she basically is the one who tells the cops about it. She's gonna have to go to trial and you know give evidence against her mother. Also, throughout this book, she's thinking maybe she's not as different as her mum and the things that her mum basically trained her and showed her what to do throughout her life is having an effect on her now and she's really, really worried that she may have murderous tendencies too. It was a good read, good premise. It was dark and twisted, which I like, but I just think it could have been a little bit better. The ending wasn't everything I hoped for, so for that reason I gave it a three. Still interesting enough though, um, if you have this or you're thinking about it, I would suggest it. It's really, really interesting and it is, again, like First 15 Lines of Harry August, quite a unique premise. Then Spookathon began and the first book I picked up was Saloni by Andrew Michael Hurley. I gave this four stars. I don't want to talk too much about this, about these next five books, because you can watch my Spookathon vlog if you like, which I will link down below and it'll give you a full view of my thoughts on these books and also if you're a Harry Potter fan you might like that vlog because I go down to the Harry Potter merch store in Edinburgh which is beautiful so if you want to see that check it out I'll link it down below. So the first one I read was Loney. Uh, this was really really interesting but I only give it a four stars just because it wasn't really enough for me. If you don't know what it's about it's about a church group kind of like a family and their priest who visit a place called the Loney which is very famous for being a religious place and the the mom in this story of the protagonist, who's a young boy, believes that the place can cure her son, who I think is maybe on the spectrum. He basically is kind of mute, so she wants to get him to talk. That's all I'll tell you about that one. Then read Down by Chuck Palahniuk, loved this, gave it a 4.5. It's about a girl called Madison who's 13, who is the daughter of a famous movie star and a billionaire father who ends up in hell and she is basically at the beginning of every chapter she's writing a little passage to Satan which begins are you there Satan it's me Madison I won't tell you too much about this I don't want to spoil it but this was really really good if you've not read this I highly recommend it I then picks up Horns by Joe Hill which was awesome I gave this five stars it's about a guy who um grows horns from the top of his head it's kind of magical realism. It's really, really suspenseful, really creepy. It's about a murder of his ex-girlfriend and he is a suspect throughout this, or was a suspect throughout this. And he, as he grows horns, he starts to be able to hear the thought, well not hear the thoughts, but people around him start telling, them, telling him really dark truths about themselves and what they think of him. And it's, it was a little bit hard to read in some parts. It's like, ooh, that hurts. But yeah, read it, it's well good. I then read Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin and this was my favourite book that I read for Spookathon. I gave it a five stars and the reason I gave it five stars, it doesn't have the best reviews on Goodreads, was because this was the one that creeped me out the most and that's what I want from a scary book. Um, this is super suspenseful, you probably already know what this is about, yeah, um, <laughs> you can tell from the, from the title, from the title, from the cover. And I loved this story, if you've not read the original but you maybe watched the film, I would highly recommend reading this, I, I just really really liked it. To finish Spookathon off, I read Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk, which was a reread for me. I love this book. It is so messed up. It's probably the most messed up book I've ever read. And it's about a group of, I think it's 13? No, 23. You don't hear every perspective, so that's good, don't worry. And it's um, kind of short stories throughout this. And it's basically about these 23 writers who go to a writer's retreat. Um, but they're basically locked in an old theatre for three months and they are trying to come up with their best work, basically. And they're telling stories about their tragic past and they all want the best survival story when they get out of this place because food is scarce, you know, and there's no heating and everything starts to kind of go downhill and they're all thinking, when we get out, this will be a media circus and I want the best story. So yes, really, really good. Five stars, as always. If you watched my last video, you know that I have predicted five books that I believe are gonna be five star reads for me and this was the first one and that's Turtle All The Way Down by John Green. I was very dubious about this but I do have to say bloody love this. The hype is worth it. As someone who suffers from anxiety and um, spiral, spiraling thoughts this was, I just saw myself in this, I really did and it made me cry, it made me smile, it left me with one hell of a book hangover. It's basically about a girl called I think it's Aza or Aza, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me just say Aza, that sounds better. And um, it's about her, and there's also kind of like a mystery in this, but it's mostly about 
her mental illness and how she deals with it. Um, she has OCD. John Green also has OCD, so it's own voices, and it did feel very, very real. I could go on forever about this. I'll try not to, because <laughs> I'll probably talk about this in other videos. But yeah, if you've not read this yet and you and you like a good mental health story, please do, please do pick this up. It's not exactly um, simplistic as you'd expect some way to be. John Green does really, really, really good job of not dumbing anything down for us. And I've not really liked many of his past works, but I am a convert. Anything he brings out after this, I'm buying and I'm reading immediately. I absolutely loved this. Yes. So I think this was my favorite book of the month. Oh, five stars. I was right, five stars. I was then in the mood for some sci-fi. On my last video, I showed you all the books I had on my TBR and Kath from Kath Elizabeth Reads recommended that I read Sleeping Giants because she really, really enjoyed it. This is by Sylvain Nouvelle. And I loved this. I thought it was really, really good. I'm excited to pick up the second one. So thanks Kath for that if you're watching. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. It's kind of in the same vein as Illuminae in the sense that it's written, but it's written in interviews, which is very, very exciting. And also you never get to find out the name of the interviewer, which I liked, adds a little bit of suspense. It's basically about a, well, it starts off where a young girl falls into a hole and she lands on a big giant robot hand, which has technology, which, shouldn't have had that kind of technology because you date a carbonate, car carbon dating even, carbon dating, have said that this has been there for thousands of years. So it's basically an investigation into how and why this is here. And it just goes on from there. I can't tell you any more else, anything else about spoiling it, but I know the second one's gonna be really good because this is just starting to get really, really good. So I'll pick that up very, very soon. I gave this a 4.5. I think the next one will probably be a five star for me. So this was really good. Then, back to a thriller that I really wanted to get to before the end of the year, was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I love this book. Um, it was very, very slow getting into it. It's basically about a woman. We never get to find out her name, which was quite interesting. Um, it was written quite a, quite a while ago. Um, it's kind of set in the early 1900s, I'd say. Maybe 30s or 40s. I'm not 100% sure when this was set. Um, it says it was originally published by in 1938, so that gives you... That gives you the time frame there. Um, so it's basically about this woman who um, meets a man in Monte Carlo when she is kind of a handmaiden to a wealthy older woman. And she marries him and goes back to his family estate in England called Manderley, which is very, very famous in its local community um, for having parties and things. And she finds out basically that she's not the first Mrs. De Winter or Mrs. De Winter. Um, she is the second and his first wife was called Rebecca and was well loved and well praised for everything she did. So she's basically living in the shadow of this former wife who tragically um, lost her life in a sea boat accident, sailing accident I guess. And yeah, it's very, very slow, but the writing in here is beautiful. It really is atmospheric. You are in Mandalay. There's so many descriptions about flowers a lot of flowers, but this was really, really good. If you've not read anything by Daphne du Maurier, I would say read Rebecca. The end had me absolutely floored, even though I probably should have seen it coming. I got to the end and I was like, well, damn. So yeah, um, this was awesome. I would give, it was a bit slow, so I'm not giving it a five, but I'm giving it a four and I would read more from Daphne du Maurier again, because I just thought it was very, very interesting and very good. I also listened to Never Night by Jay Kristoff on Audible and I really, really, really enjoyed the story. I didn't particularly like the narrator. As I mentioned in my Spookathon vlog, if you've watched that, he's American and there's a lot of British slang in this, so he does not get it right. And also one of the love interests, he kind of gives him an accent and it makes him sound a little bit like Harry Winston, so <laughs> that didn't do anything for me. A little bit weird. So yeah, that was super, super good as well. It's about a young girl called Mia who has some kind of power. Don't wanna give any spoilers away, but she basically sees the death of her father when she's very, very young. Her mum's taken away, so she wants to get revenge on the people that did this to them. And she goes to, and to train to be an assassin at the Red Keep with lots of other potential assassins and there's lots of friendships in here and oh it's just so good there's magic there's mystery there's murder obviously and i'm super excited to read the second one god's grave i want to get to that before the end of the year hopefully so that's my wrap up guys um i hope you liked this and saw some books that maybe you think in or maybe maybe i should give that a read um do let me know if you have any recommendations for november and december as well 
Is there anything like these books that you think I'd be interested in? Please do let me know. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it, and I will catch you soon with my November TBR and also a cheeky little haul. Catch you later, guys. Bye! Oh, I know. Life is hard for a cat. Also, if you heard any annoying noises throughout this video, this one's to blame. Meet Tiberius. You want to say sorry to the people for the distractions? He doesn't care. Cat's out.